everyone sitting here, you know. You know what you want to be doing. You know it. There's a million reasons you're not doing it, and it's probably one of two things, then I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. Hey everyone, I'm Brian, uh, Brian Rashid. I want to first thank you for the invite to, to be on this pound, panel. Angie, thank you so much. It's really cool to be here. I, I run a marketing and, and branding company. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I speak around the world about how you can make money doing what you love. I really believe, and I'm, the reason that I'm here tonight selfishly is to convince one of you that it's the best time in the history of the world to go after your dream and to actually make money doing it. You know, you used to have to choose between like, well, I'll be a banker, no offense, Angie, um, <laughs> and make, you know, 200 Gs and hate my life, or I'll do what I love and never be able to pay the rent. It's actually things have flipped and I think that it's like now ever easier than ever to be able to do the thing that you love in life and still make 200,000 or make 71,000 or make 52,000 and live humbly but be happier than shit every single day. And how many Latinos do we have in the room? I call myself a Latingo. You know what's a Latingo? Latingo is un gringo de sangre latino de corazón para que sepan. I actually believe that, that tonight we have like good energy here and I'm, I'm super excited to, uh, to jam with you guys. So thank, thanks so much. I was at the time living with who was at the time my, my girlfriend and we were we were having dinner one night and I was not happy towards the last three, four, five months of my job, I was not happy. I loved Bloomberg. I actually wanted to become the mayor of New York City. So that was, that's why I went to law school and that's why I went to work for Bloomberg because I was like, well, if you want to become the mayor, you should probably go work for the mayor and see what it's all about. And I quickly learned that I did not want to be the mayor of New York City. <laughs> um, and Bloomberg was super rich and didn't have to cater to anyone. So if you're not super rich, uh, thus my depression, um, <laughs> then you really have to cater to so many needs to get anything that you want to get done done. And I just, I, I wanted to do something different. So the first thing was, I realized, okay, I'm not going to be the mayor of New York City, so what should I do? And I was eating dinner with my girlfriend and she looked at me and I had been com kind of complaining about my job for the last couple of months. And she straight up looked at me at dinner and, and it was one of like the bad days, you know, like the bad days where like, I was like, oh, I have to ask my boss for vacation, you know, like first word problem kind of thing, but I was still not happy. And so she looked at me and she said, you know what, Brian, here's what I don't understand. You are at your best when you're a free spirit and you spend so much of your time suppressing that. And I don't know why. And I quit the next day. I literally quit the next day because it struck this was Janice Picconi. Janice Picconi, if you're watching, I, I love you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry it didn't work out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, you know, but from a very young age, and this is something that I'm trying to, I'm, that was funny, and I hope that you guys like, like, thanks for the laughter, but what I'm trying to do is add value, not to you guys. What I hope that, that everybody and that every seed in here realizes is that, like, I knew from a super young age, I used to tell my mom, mommy, I was like five or six, I'm going to help millions of people. And she'd be like, that's great, honey, you whatever you want, you know, do whatever you want. My mom's amazing. Like, so for every mom in this room, like, yo, I have more respect for you than any other professional in the world, period, even like the seven-year-old making 380 Gs. Um, <laughs> and that was, that was a moment where I was like, mommy, I'm gonna, I want to help millions of people. And I think that, you know, I left my job when I was 28 and I'm 35 now. And I really honestly tell you, and I feel, and I see people, I think we're basically all in that, in that range, but like, I really feel like my life is just starting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then just going for it and, and doing every single day a little bit better than I did the day before and getting rid of all arbitrary, I was like, I wanna be a millionaire by 35. I used to do that. And then I'd be like, but why? <laughs> like you get to play the game that you love every single day, making 50 and then it was 100 and then it was 150 and then it was 200. Not at 380 yet, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> And so I think that that was the moment, tapping into the thing that I always knew that I was supposed to do. So like everyone sitting here, you know, you know what you want to be doing, you know it. 
There's a million reasons you're not doing it, and it's probably one of two things, then I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. First thing is, you're probably scared because you're scared about one other person's opinion of you. So figure out who it is and talk to them. And the second thing is, you've put some sort of arbitrary thing in your head that gives you some sort of success metric. For me, it was a millionaire by 35. For you, it's owning the house or the car by 40 or having the kids by 38. And that's gonna slow you down because you made that up. So I think that th that's kind of like my, 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 my bit on that. Right. And Brian, you are absolutely, you guys, when I tell you he is the absolute most optimistic person you will ever meet, think about a person who never glances at their phone these days when they speak to you. That never happens. He's mm -hmm. in the moment present every second of every single day. So I want to hear from you how you do that. That is great. Every day and you smile in the mirror. I got, I, got, I, got, I, got a good, I got a good story for you. Good. I got a good story for you. How do you deal with the bad? I got a good story for you. So when I told you guys that I quit my job the next day, what I didn't tell you is that I had zero plan, <laughs> right? So like you were all like, yeah, someone even said facts. And I was like, fact, the facts are I was going to be in deep trouble six months later. And then I slowly start to see all of the money in my bank account go away. And it's not so fun to sleep till 11 because you can't sleep at night because you're stressed out about the money going away. And you can't sleep till 11 because you're up at six and you're like, what am I gonna do? I have no, and I had no idea how I was gonna make money. At that moment, I was like, I need to really step it up. And I started to come more into my power of like helping people tell their stories. But as all of us know at this table and all of you know out there that are doing anything on your own, it takes a lot of time. It's not easy. And if you want to jump out and do your own thing, you have to understand it's going to take a lot more time than you think. Yeah. And like, I actually am a huge fan of the nine to five job and build your side hustle. Like, I think that's a smart, smart, smart way to go. Because let me tell you something, your creativity is sucked dry when you're thinking about how you can pay the rent. Yes. So like, I would much like your model is smart. <laughs> and, and like all these young kids write me, they're like, yo, I'm going to leave my job tomorrow. And I'm like, D that's why I always tell the comma. I quit my job tomorrow, comma. Like it wasn't good for a year and a half, two years. So, but in that, I stayed optimistic because if you think about it in the macro, right? And this is something that we all, I think we lose track of a lot. And this is why I really try to push optimism, which is I was still every single day doing exactly what I wanted to do. Like, how am I gonna complain that I didn't have enough money when I had enough money and I chose to leave that job? Yes. And I could choose to go back to it again. And I could choose to get, I have a college education, I have personal skills, I could get another. So it's like, you either decide to be optimistic and not complain about the thing that you chose yes. or you don't. And so for me, the optimism and being present, and I appreciate you saying that, it all comes from the fact that like every single thing that I'm doing in my life, I've worked really hard to make sure that it's my decision and my choice, and you don't get to complain about your decisions. Otherwise, why did you decide it? Nice to meet you, Brian. Really, really a pleasure. Then we do a vlog. You can say hello to the vlog. This is my Ravens and Mama. It's not just a necklace. Eso. This is how we do it, bro.